Boy, these last few nights on UFOs have really stirred up the loony bin, I can assure you. Got a letter from somebody named Lita, and a few other letters from people castigating me, saying that I chickened out. Saying that I'm not telling the truth when I say I don't know if extraterrestrials are real or not. And they cite passages from my book, which they have not read. They claim to have read it, but like most who read my book, they have not read it. So I'm going to read them the parts that they skipped. And I'm also going to tell you, despite everything that's written in this book, there is no proof for the existence of extraterrestrial life in the universe or on this earth or in our skies. There are letters written by people who cannot be found. People who wrote letters who can be found who will not comment on the letters. There is a letter written by an astronaut to the United Nations who now claims that he didn't write it. <laughs> and all kinds of things, folks. Despite what you read in this book that makes you think that extraterrestrials might exist, none of it is proof. Not one single bit of it. And that's the problem with this UFO subject. There is no proof. And when people read my book, they don't read what I wrote. They read what they want to hear. They read what tends to verify what they already believe or what they wish to believe. So, in my book, on page 196, at the beginning of the chapter concerning UFOs entitled The Secret Government, under the paragraph headed Perspective, let me read to you what you obviously did not read. And remember, this book has been in print for a whole bunch of years. Many sources of information were used to research this chapter. I originally wrote this piece as a research paper. It was first delivered at the MUFON Symposium on July 2nd, 1989 in Las Vegas, Nevada. Most of this knowledge comes directly from, or is a result of my own research into the top secret magic, spelled M-A-J-I-C, material, which I saw and read between the years 1970 and 1973 as a member of the intelligence briefing team of the Commander-in-Chief of the Pacific Fleet. Since some of this information was derived from sources that I cannot divulge for obvious reasons, and from published sources which I cannot vouch for, this chapter must be termed a hypothesis. A hypothesis. I want all you loony bin people to go look that word up and make sure you understand what it means. I continue. I firmly believe that if, if aliens are real, this is the true nature of the beast. It is the only scenario that has been able to bind all the diverse elements. It is the only scenario that answers all the questions and places the various fundamental mysteries in an arena that makes sense. It is the only explanation which shows the chronology of events and demonstrates that the chronologies, when assembled, match perfectly. The bulk of this I believe to be true if, if, if the material that I viewed in the Navy is authentic. As for the rest, I do not know, and that is why this paper must be termed a hypothesis. I have since come to believe that the material that I viewed in the Navy is not correct, but in fact was a deception. And I base that upon an awful lot of evidence that you can count as proof. Now also, on page 234 of my book, I make it very clear what I believe. Very clear. In conclusion, number five, at the end of this chapter, on page 234, I say, and I quote, There is always the possibility that I was used, that the whole alien scenario is the greatest hoax in history, designed to create an alien enemy from outer space in order to expedite the formation of a one-world government. I have found evidence that this could be true. I have included that evidence in the appendix. I advise you to consider this scenario as being probable." End quote. Now I can't make it any clearer to you little loony cuckoos out there who want to run around and quote my book as proof that extraterrestrial life exists and is visiting this planet, you're off your rocker. You haven't read my book, and you're doing yourself, me, and everyone else an injustice when you do that. Just recently, there was an article in the Village Voice in New York City, which claimed 
makes the same claims. Whoever wrote the article claims that he researched me, researched my book and the material that I do, and he has not. He's a liar. He's done no research at all. He claims that I say that extraterrestrials are real and that they're in an agreement with the United States government and that they're mutilating animals and human beings and all of this kind of stuff. And I've never said that I ever even saw anything that said uh, human beings were mutilated. So, folks, I just wanted to get that out of the way so that we can dispense with those wacko, ridiculous idiots out there who claim that they read my book and did not read it, in fact, at all. They went through it and picked out what they wanted to believe and read it. And then they quote me as being proof of the existence of extraterrestrials, and it's not true. I don't know if extraterrestrials exist in the universe or here. Due to the vastness of the universe, I would never make any kind of a claim that they do not exist. I do know this. If they do exist, they're not bothering us. And if they are visiting this earth, they are not a threat to the national security, just as the government says. And they are not running around mutilating cattle. They are not killing human beings. They are not the ones manipulating us into a one-world government. But instead, if they exist, and if they are visiting this earth, they are being used to propel us into a one-world government. But I don't even think that's the case. I believe that what's flying in our skies is of human origin. And I can present a pretty good case for that. A case that's very hard to refute. However, no one on the face of this earth can present a case for the existence of extraterrestrial life, much less their visitation to this earth. All the so-called proof that these people talk about is nothing but innuendo, unsubstantiated claims, a total 100% complete lack of any kind of physical evidence whatsoever. In fact, several people have offered as much as one million dollars to anyone on this earth who could come forward with proof of extraterrestrial life. No one, not one person on the face of this globe, and all of these wacko UFO people know about these rewards that have been offered. Not one single person has stepped up to present one ounce of proof. And the reason they don't, ladies and gentlemen, is because there is none. Because if there was some proof, in the extensive amount of research that I have done, I would have come across it. And that one million dollars would be in my pocket at this very instant.